revolutionized music world when they hit the market in 1965. I'm talking about the Moog synthesizer. Not Moog, which I found out. Now, where would Emerson Lake and Palmer, Parliament of P-Funk, have been without this groundbreaking instrument? I'm very honored to welcome its inventor, Dr. Robert Moog, to the screensaver. Welcome, Dr. Moog. Hey, glad to be here, Patrick. This is amazing. Wait, okay, you're kind of, are, are you the father of the synthesizer? No, there have been a lot of us. It's, it was a group effort. <laughs> what, uh, what exactly would you, if you were going to, somebody sat you down and said, what is a synthesizer? What, what would the answer be? Well, to synthesize is to put together something complete out of its component parts. Mm -hmm. That's what a synthesizer does. It, it, it's like a, like a bag of parts that you put together to make a complete sound. Very cool. Now, when you first, you started first working on the design in, in 64. Where yeah. did that come from? From a, a, an experimental composer who wanted to make new sounds electronically. And he told me the kind of sounds he wanted to make, and it sounded really interesting to do. Did this start out, did you, you know, did you just sort of like break out a box for the keyboard that they were able to play, or, or what was the, what did the first synthesizers look like? They were, uh, they were individual modules. Mm -hmm. uh, the first things uh, we built together uh, were a voltage-controlled oscillator That'll and, get a, your and a voltage-controlled amplifier. An oscillator makes a musical tone, an amplifier shapes it, Having a voltage control means you could use one to shape the other, so you could get very complex sounds. Very neat. Now, you weren't actually trying to, to emulate real instruments at that no. point. No. No, in fact, just the opposite. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make completely new sounds, sounds that nobody has ever heard before. Were you using keyboards at that point, or was that a no-no also? <laughs> uh, we did eventually try a keyboard out, but that was just one way of controlling the sounds. Mm -hmm. The uh, composers uh, who were experimenting with electronics at that time mm -hmm. wanted to make just new sounds and build music up out of these new sounds. Very cool. We actually have, we showed a picture just a second ago of yeah. one of the early ones. Yeah. We, where I was actually talking to you just a minute ago, if you were talking about individual modules, like the modulation buses or oscillators, mm -hmm. these, these would have been a separate box stacked up back in the day. There would have been a panel about this big, mm -hmm. and behind that there, there would have been, you know, a book, uh, a fat book size of circuitry. Very cool. Now, we actually have a, a mini Moog here. Could you play something on it for us? Yeah, this is, uh, this happens to be our anniversary edition mini Moog Voyager. The 50th, 50th anniversary? 50th anniversary edition. Yes, sir. We've been doing this for, uh, for 50 years. <coughs> so, what I'll play here are, mm -hmm. are, uh, are some of the different sounds that are stored in a, in a digital memory. Now, the sounds are made by analog circuitry, but the uh, the storage of all these settings is digital. Very cool. Speaking of P-Funk... So one of the advantages of the Mini Moog... We actually, I guess we can pull the, the, the back of the case down. Okay. You guys have shrunk this down, because back in the day, these, these the full-size Moog were like a six, seven-foot stack of units. Yeah, now nobody try this at home now. <laughs> this will violate your warranty. Yeah, it sure will. <laughs> uh, but this is the analog circuitry here. Mm -hmm. On this one board with 800 parts, all the, all, there are all the circuits that make and shape and uh, uh, mix together the, the sounds. Mm -hmm. This board here is a separate little microcomputer that controls uh, the, the digital memory that remembers the panel settings. Very nice. So I don't actually have to change each knob every time I want to shift any That's of right. the sounds. Yeah, now, a circuit board like this mm -hmm. is made with the latest technology, and these lines are very, very thin. They didn't have stuff like that 20 or 30 years ago, and that's how we can get all this stuff mm -hmm. into one instrument like this. That's pretty amazing. So you actually started out, your first love was, uh, or I should say the birthplace of both electronic music yeah. and your, your role in it was actually theremin. So this that's actually right. we have a kit with the Moog Music actually sells. Yeah, we've been, this has been very successful with us. Thousands of people have, have built uh, just this model of kit. It, it includes a nice wood cabinet. It includes uh, a circuit board that's all assembled and tested. Uh, the antennas. Then you put together yourself uh, the, the, the panel and you do the wiring from the panel to the rest of it. When you get all done, you have something that's uh, electrically and, and mechanically pretty much like our ether waste theremin. And that was actually, I guess, a, it was a Russian invention originally, it's Dr. Theremin, is that right? That's right. Uh, Leon Theremin was a Russian physicist, mm -hmm. and he, he, he invented this in 1920. That's early. Yeah. That's very early. One of the very earliest. Now, I guess it's pitch and volume. 
are controlled by the two. Would you call them antennas? Yeah. What do you call they them? They are antennas, okay. yes. This is a pitch antenna. Mm -hmm. The closer I get my hand to it, the higher the pitch goes. Mm -hmm. And uh, my left hand now is controlling the volume. The more I get my hand away, the louder the sound will get. Virtuoso, is yeah. it a thereminist? Is that how we say that? A uh, virtuoso thereminist, Robbie Virus, who, who uh, plays in, in San Francisco. Very cool. It's unbelievable. Robbie, can we hear a little something?